dear students today i am explaining sub topic of your topic distribution law that is the applications of distribution law distribution law is very important in the different fields so we will see the applications with the help of ppts first application of the distribution law is solvent extraction the extraction of an organic substance from an aqueous solution is probably the most important application of a distribution law the process is carried out by shaking the aqueous solution with a immiscible organic solvent say ether in a separatory funnel the distribution ratio being in favor of ether most of the substance passes into the ether layer on standing with the aqueous and ether layers separate in the funnel the two layers to lo the lower layer aqueous layer is run out leaving the ether layer behind this ether layer is then transferred into a distillation flask ether is distilled over while the organic substance is left as a residue in the flask if desired the process may be repeated with aqueous layer left behind after the first extraction with a fresh quantity of solvent means in this case we are doing the separation of organic substance with the help of separatory funnel in the separatory funnel we are taking the both the solvents in this way aqueous layer is taken here and organic solvent is taken in the upper upper part the substance which we have to extract that is present into the aqueous layer this substance we have to separate from the aqueous layer to separate the organic substance which is dissolved into the aqueous layer for that purpose we are adding another organic solvent which is immiscible with the aqueous layer after vigorous shaking of these two layers with each other and on keeping on a stable ground after some time what happens whatever the quantity of the dissolved organic substance which is present in the aqueous layer that will gets distributed into the organic solvent being the distribution ratio is more in favor with the organic solvent more and more substance will be get distributed into the organic solvent then these two layers are made separate with the help of distribution with the help of distribution principle and by using the 
separatory panel. First of all, aqueous layer is made separate, and then the organic solvent layer is taken into the another beaker. In that organic solvent, now the organic substance which was present in the aqueous layer that that is distributed into the organic solvent. For example, ether. Then that ether is a distilled off with that organic substance. Then ether distilled off, and the organic substance will left behind into the beaker. In this way, the dissolved organic substance from the aqueous layer can be separated in this solvent extraction method. This is the use of or the application of distribution law in solvent extraction. Then we will see the next application that is the liquid liquid chromatography. Chromatography is a modern technique of separating a mixture of small amount of organic materials. The mixture is applied at the top of the column of silica soaked in water. Another immiscible solvent say hexane is allowed to flow down. The amount of each component of the mixture is partitioned between the stationary liquid phase water and the mobile phase hexane. Compound with the highest distribution coefficient is first to move down and then hexane which is collected separately. Component with a lower distribution ratio comes down later and is received in another vessel. In this chromatographic technique, we can separate the or we are in a position to separate the mixture of organic substances which are in a lesser quantity. Whenever the two or more than two substances which are present in the form of mixture, then that mixture is applied here and with which the solvent to For example, hexane is allowed to flow from top to the bottom in this glass tube. And a stationary phase is present in the form of soaked water in the silica. That soaked water is acting as a stationary phase and hexane is acting as a mobile phase. Here the two Solvents are present water and hexane. These two immiscible liquids are used, used, used here for the separation of organic substance which are in the form of mixture in a small quantity. These organic substances show the distribution between the two solvents that is the mobile phase and the stationary phase. When the distribution ratio is different for that two or more than two substances in the mixture, they, their flow is different, their velocity is different. Means, whose distribution ratio is more in favor of the hexane or the mobile phase that will come fast or easily towards the bottom and whose distribution ratio is low that is lagging behind. Means in this way, the two or more than two substances which are in a mixture, which are in small quantity that can be separated with the help of liquid-liquid chromatography. Why it is called liquid-liquid chromatography? Because both the solvents are liquid. 
stationary phase is liquid and mobile phase is also liquid and with the help of that two liquids and on the basis of their distribution ratio that components of that mixtures can be separated easily this is the simplest technique for the separation of organic substances from their mixture whenever they are in a small quantity then the next application of the distribution law is desilurization of lead in this case argentiniferous lead having the percent of silver less than 0.1 percent such type of lead is melted and this molten mass of lead and the molten mass of zinc is shaken with each other after shaking with each other and after settling what happens most of the silver from the argentiniferous lead gets distributed into the zinc molten mass and why it is so because the distribution ratio is more in favor of the molten mass of zinc and due to that reason whatever the quantity which is present into the into the argentiniferous lead of silver that will get distributed into the molten zinc and this molten zinc is with silver is later on distilled with the retort and molten zinc is distilled off and remaining the living silver behind in this way in this case also the role of distribution law playing important function for the extraction of silver from the argentiniferous lead then the next application confirmatory test of bromide and iodide in this case whether in the given reaction or whether in the given salt is contained with bromide or iodide radicals that is the you know, that is we have to decide with the help of this test first of all the salt solution is treated with the chlorine water then what will happen some of the or small quantity of bromine and iodine is liberated that solution is then shaken with the chloroform on standing what happens that bromine or iodine enters into the chloroform layer or concentrates into the chloroform layer and if there is a bromide then the color becomes red if there is a iodine then the color becomes violet from this color change in the bromine layer we could confirm ourselves the given salt solution has bromide and iodide ions this is the principle which is also based on the distribution law then the determination of association whenever solute x is added into the solvent a and b then that solute x shows the association in one of the solvent then up to what extent the association is occurred or whether association is occurred or not that is also decided with the help of distribution law then next determination of dissociation whenever solute x is added into the solvent a and solvent b which are completely immiscible with each other then one of the solvent or the molecules of solute x shows the dissociation in one of the solvent for example we are adding the solute x into the solvent a and solvent b then what will happen solvent x remains normal in the solvent a but solute x 
gets dissociated into further smaller molecules in the solvent B. And in this case, what is the situation of dissociation? What is the degree of dissociation? And what is the extent of dissociation that can be calculated or determined with the help of distribution law by using the formula C1 upon C2 minus C2 C1 upon C2 into 1 minus x is equal to k. By using this formula, we can find out the degree of dissociation and the concentration of the solute x in the different solvents. This is the application of the distribution law. Then the next application of the distribution law is determination of solubility. Solubility and distribution law is more over one and the same. And solubility can be calculated with the help of distribution law. C1 upon C2 is equal to Kd is a distribution law. But C1 upon C2 is nothing but the S1 upon S2 is equal to Kd. Therefore, solubility of the solute can be calculated with the help of distribution law. Then the next application, distribution indicators. In the iodine titrations, we are using the starch as an indicator which shows the blue coloration at the end point. But for the accurate results, in some cases, we are using the distribution indicators also. In this case, few drops of immiscible organic solvents such as chloroform or the carbon tetrachloride is added to the solution. Iodine passes into the organic layer and create the intense violet coloration. In this way, for the detection of end point of the reaction of the iodine particularly, we could use the distribution indicators which are nothing but the in which the there is a use of distribution law or the principle of distribution law is also used in the distribution indicators to find out the end point of the iodine reactions and so on in this way there are so many applications of the law that we have seen here. Thank you.